Hello, crypto world. Jay Sherm here. I'm going to bring things down a notch for you because it seems like people still don't understand the fundamentals behind Bitcoin, Ethereum, cryptocurrency, the blockchain. So I'm going to start off by saying Bitcoin is an innovative payment system. It is a way to pay your friends, family, businesses globally without high fees, without using banks, without using government regulations. Um, although lately the SEC and the IRS have been kind of stepping in to put, put some sort of regulations on Bitcoin, which is fine because it helps avoid all the scammers out there. Um, if you go to Bitcoin.org, you can read a little bit about it. You can watch the video. It'll tell you a little bit about Bitcoin. Now, um, the blockchain, which is what it's built on, that's why it's so revolutionary. When people say, well, why is Bitcoin so valuable? It's built on the blockchain. What is the blockchain? It's not much else besides a public ledger of transactions. So in this example on Coindesk that says, what is blockchain technology? You'll see that Wikipedia, yes, they, they talk about Wikipedia here. When you are accessing Wikipedia from your phone, your laptop, your computer, it hits the Wikipedia server, which hits their database, which is one copy of all the information on Wikipedia to give you information about ninjas and broccoli and uh, Europe. So when you're doing your research, you're accessing that information on one server. Blockchain technology splits it up into tens, hundreds, thousands of nodes and or mining rigs and or computers and or people like me who host these files or create these transactions or do the algorithms needed to make the transactions work. But it doesn't happen on one server. It happens on all of them together as a network of computers, just like the internet. It's very similar to when the internet first came out and computers started coming out to, to uh, you know, have these files and these pages and these other things interact together on a wide network. Well, that's what the blockchain is, except the difference being it's for more transactional versus informational. But it is changing with the advent of Ethereum. Ethereum helps you build unstoppable applications called decentralized applications or dApps. And I'll get into a couple of examples of what Ethereum does. But for now, let's just say that it is a new language that allows you to create smart contracts. A smart contract is no different than a paper contract that you might have and have to sign um, with somebody or travel document. You know, you're taking a trip somewhere and you have to print out all these, these travel documents for your next trip. Well, Ethereum allows you to have a smart contract where instead of having to print out paperwork and go to a lawyer and sign it and come up with the terms of the agreement, you can just have a smart contract do the heavy lifting for you. And when the contract is fulfilled, Ethereum gets sent to your wallet automatically. So when you have a technology built on the Ethereum blockchain smart contract technology, it becomes an altcoin or an alternative coin. These are all the other coins you've been hearing about in the market. I'm going to show you a couple of examples of altcoins built on Ethereum and why I think they're so valuable or so useful to society. Agrello.org has the Delta coin. It's legally binding smart contracts powered by AI. This means that you can have an easy to set up multi-party agreement. It's automated. It's legally binding. If you watch the video, it explains to you how this works. Very simply put, you want to buy a house. You have a smart contract in place. The legalities of that contract are also there by AI. You can then purchase the house from the person selling it and in your uh, Delta coin go into escrow. Once the house sale goes through, you digitally sign the contract and the Delta coins get sent to your wallet. It's over. Simple. Another one I like is called D market. I was part of the ICO, so I did invest. The team is awesome. Um, what D market does, it lets you trade in game items for D market tokens. So great example friend of mine who plays World of Warcraft is considered a millionaire in World of Warcraft. All the gold he has, the swords, the shields, the potions, the mounts, which are like tigers or dragons that you can ride. You can't do anything with them, but use them in the game. But with DMarket's API, you can now trade those items for DMarket tokens using smart contracts. And now other people can get those items from you if they want them. You can now sell your in-game items in video games. That's huge. Another huge one that is just recently had an ICO that I was also a part of, disclaimer, is Bloom. 
So the recent Equifax hack that took place and all of us were pretty much affected. We all lost our identities and our social security numbers and all of our credit has been breached thanks to Equifax and the government. Well, say hello to inclusive credit. It's decentralized credit. It's powered by Ethereum. So now, instead of having this credit that is you know, stuck on some sort of server at Equifax or whatever, now it's decentralized, it's cross-border, um, now you can have a different type of uh, protocol that uses uh, a different kind of credit system. So now it's Bloom ID and Bloom IQ and Bloom Score. So it's highly inclusive, whereas credit scores from typical companies are not very inclusive. It's, you know, here's your score and here's why you have it and that's it. You can't get any kind of uh, feedback from uh, the society in general, which Bloom does offer. And last but not least, I'm going to talk about a coin that I've mentioned before called SiaCoin, and it is a decentralized cloud storage system. It's completely private. So here's a great example. Um, pretty recently, a couple years here and there, a Dropbox was breached, lots of files were leaked, um, HBO, Game of Thrones, the scripts were leaked, the episodes were leaked, hackers asked for ransom of Bitcoin. Um, you have Yahoo was breached, billions of email addresses exposed, Ashley Madison hack, marital statuses were now in jeopardy because everyone found out who was who. Well, you can't do that with SciCoin. You can't hack it because it's not uh, available on a server. Your data gets uploaded and split up into metadata. Those pieces get then set up into all these different nodes, which are computers, which are people, just like Airbnb rents out your extra bedroom well, SciCoin rents out your extra hard drive space. See, SciCoin and cryptocurrency and Ethereum and, and, and the whole blockchain, it's not very different than current companies like Facebook and Airbnb and Uber and, and, and Instagram and Snapchat. Those companies, they offer a service of some sort or a product or, or something that adds value to society. Although some companies, it's kind of up in the air as to whether or not they add value or if they're hurting society. But that's another topic altogether. In this case, SciCoin offers a very positive solution in society. File storage that's decentralized and affordable. If you look at the prices compared to Amazon and Google and Microsoft, it's a fraction of the costs. It's so low, but you're getting so much more for the value. You're getting your files to be safer. So just like you run out your Airbnb space and you run out your driving skills with your car for Uber, you're running out your hard drive space. So hopefully this helps you put it into perspective. And remember, you can always go online and research the person behind Ethereum. Look at the news about why it's so popular, why it's so you know, strong right now. Go on Twitter, do some research, and look at the list of use cases for Ethereum, for example. I can literally list these out for minutes, sitting here for, and talking about it for hours. Web hosting, social networks, energy transfer, marriage contracts, financial markets, elections. We could stop hacking voting systems. We could literally decentralize the voting system and how can anybody ta tamper with voting? It's impossible if it's decentralized. So remember, cryptocurrency, altcoins, Ethereum, even Bitcoin, they are all backed by a fundamental technology that makes them useful in society. Every coin you talk about, every coin you hear about, Ripple, Verge, even Potcoin, all of them, they have to do with some sort of underlying technology that makes it easier for people to transact for a certain purpose. So there's a value to each coin because there is a technology backing that coin. There is a team backing that coin. Do your research. Look up the founders. Look at what they're doing. Look at where they've been. Look at what they're up to now. Look at the roadmaps. Everything is available online. You can easily find it if you just do some research. So all I can say is, if you've been hearing about all the hype and you've been seeing the dips and the crashes, they're not crashes, everyone. It's a lot of people jumping into the market all of a sudden and then people are pulling out some profits. And it's a little bit of a dip. When you see a dip, that's when you buy coins and then you'll see the money rise. I mean, just yesterday, it, the, the Ethereum dipped to 465 and now it's at 750. You know, I bought some Ethereum yesterday on the dip. You should too. Just do your research. Make sure you learn about each coin. Make sure you learn about the technology, the team, the platform, and what value it's going to bring to society for the next four years or even longer.
That's it for today. If you enjoyed my video, feel free to donate Ethereum or Bitcoin in the description. I put my addresses, watch my other videos, and I'll see you on the flip side.